And I've been working with F&D for about 15 years uh, in my private practice. I don't think F&D is a mental health disorder. I know um, some of you might have been told that, that somehow it's connected to your anxiety or uh, depression. I do not think that FND is a mental health disorder. Um, it's very real. Um, I also know from many stories that you've been told that you might be faking it or making it up. Um, that is absolutely not true. So it's something that is um, real and happening in your brain and within your nervous system. And you can learn how to regulate your nervous system in a way that your symptoms reduce and um, hopefully actually go away. Um, it can be very lonely for you. Um, I always say this to um, my clients, even though I've been doing this for a long, long time, I will never really fully understand what it's like. Um, I will never fully grasp what it's like to have any kind of a symptom um, that's happening in your body that's involuntary. Uh, so it can be lonely and that's why I'm really happy that we're doing this summit and that there's more and more space to meet as groups. And as I said, I think it's not who you are. FND is not who you are. Um, there's so much more to who you are than your symptoms. And my um, passion and my goal is to really bring that back into your life. I think that FND actually not just impacts your body, right? So often we look at the body and we say, um, you know, there's seizures or there's paralysis or twitches or ticks or pain, but it also impacts how you think and how you feel. And I think those three pieces really come together. And um, in the work, you can learn how to regulate, how to be with all of those different feelings from shame to anxiety. Um, you can work with your mind. Um, you can learn how to actually, uh, you know, really not believe everything you're thinking. That's something I talk about a lot. So what is the nervous system? Some of you might have heard what the nervous system is before. I'm just gonna go over this um, briefly. So the nervous system is actually um, uh, something that is uh, present in your whole body. So it's your brain and all the nerves in your body. And um, it controls movement, which I think is so important in the context of um, FND. Because in FND, there's so many involuntary movements. So the nervous system really controls how we move in our body. And it also affects um, all your senses. And I know that at least some of you have difficulty with sensitivity. So it's affecting um, all your senses and how we think and feel the memory part of our experience. A lot of you might have poor memory, might have difficulty learning. So the nervous system really um, is um, a, a part of our experience that's super important when it comes to FND. I wanted to um, show you a, a brief um, um, video how actually the nervous system looks in the body. So the nervous system sends information from the body to the brain. You can see that here, right? It comes from every part of the body information is being sent to the brain. So that's the nervous system. And with FND, that messaging, right? The information that's coming from your body to the brain and how the brain is interpreting that information can be disorganized, chaotic. There can, can be some misinterpretation. So even right now, listening, you know, you can check in for a moment and see how that's impacting you, what I'm talking about. It's like, this is not, FND is not your fault. You're not making it up. There's something happening in your body. 
that you can learn how to work with. And it has a lot to do with the nervous system. So there are three parts of the nervous system that are important in FND. And you don't have to remember the language right now. Just remember there's three parts. So sympathetic is where there's a lot of activation and chaos, where you might feel anxious, where your body feels really um, prickly or tense or activated. And then there is another part that's called parasympathetic. And there are two pieces of that. Um, one is called ventral vagal. That's where we feel safe and our bodies feel okay. And the other one is dorsal vagal. And that's another piece that's important because that's where some other symptoms happen. So I think about the nervous system actually um, uh, with the image of a ladder. So we climb a ladder. So in the beginning, right, when you haven't um, really been exposed to experiences that shift your nervous system in, in an unhelpful way. You might feel relaxed and you feel good in your body. So that's on the bottom of the ladder. You can see that here. And if you feel a little bit more activated, we go into sympathetic. So that's where, you know, you might feel more nervous or you might have a couple of twitches. Um, so there's stepping up the ladder. You can think about it like that. And the last step would be we go into a state where the body really goes into collapse. So three steps of how the nervous system works. And it's true for everybody. It's true for me too. Okay. So it's not just for you with FND. These are the things we all experience. And you can see that we move through these different phases, right? Sometimes you feel okay, sometimes you feel more activated, and sometimes you feel like your whole body is just shutting down. So I want to show you on another slide. <laughs> There's the, <laughs> I had to come up with something that's climbing the ladder, and I found this this morning, actually. So we all climb the ladder <clears throat> of activation, right? And we all go through different places in our nervous system. So when you think about FND now, and I know you all have different symptoms, right? I will give you a few examples of where those symptoms might be happening for you so that you can see that um, it's really something that has to do with your nervous system. So you might sometimes feel really good and um, you just have a few little hiccups that would be happening in the green zone, right? That's called ventral vagal. You feel um, safe in your body and you feel safe outside of your body. You're happy and confident, you're creative um, and you have really very few or no symptoms. So even with FND, I know that those times actually happening in your life. So I call them glimmers or glim, gl gl uh, glimpses of, of happiness, right? So glimmers are happening in your life. And sometimes you feel more like you have pain, you feel overwhelmed, you might get tunnel vision, you might feel disconnected, you might have seizures or tremors. Um, you might feel anxious and you might experience shame. I think shame is a big emotion when it comes to FND. So that's like you climbed up the ladder a little bit more and you feel more activated, right? Some of you have a mix of symptoms. Some of you might feel a lot of pain and extreme fatigue, or you have drop attacks or blurry vision or limp weakness, right? So there are all kinds of symptoms that we can actually, oops, sorry, we can actually look at and say, oh, this is where it's happening in your nervous system so that you can learn about it and then you can get the resources to work with it. I know I'm rushing through this, but <laughs> you can always come back. There will be a recording, you can reach out to me. And um, so there are other experiences 
that can be part of your FND. And some of you might have some of these experiences. I just wanted to name them. And sensory processing difficulties. So feeling overwhelmed by lights or by sound, by touch, um, is one of the things that I oftentimes see in FND. And the other one I oftentimes see too is that many of you get spacey, dissociate, you don't feel quite connected to your body or the environment. So those are two things I will talk um, briefly about um, over the next couple slides, but then you might have other um, symptoms such as sleep problems. You might have difficulty actually regulating your emotions, right? It's hard to be with emotions sometimes. And that can be part of your FND. You might have pain, um, or some of you might have um, bladder issues or speech disturbances. So those are other things that can be part of FND too. And what I've seen too is that I actually think, um, you know, I've seen more people who are on the spectrum as well with FND. So I just wanted to name that to tell you that your experience is something that is workable. Your experience is workable and you can get help. There are many wonderful people out there who can help. So sensory symptoms I just mentioned, um, and some of you might be very familiar with that. I divide them into what I call positive, not as in happy and good, but positive as in you can feel them more symptoms. So you might be sensitive to heat or um, you might be sensitive to noise uh, or the lights are too bright. In my office, I dim the lights. So anything that feels like too much. And on the other hand, you might feel not enough. You might feel numb or you might feel no pain. So those are also symptoms that can come with your FND. Again, I, I bet you that a lot of you who are listening right now can relate. So I'm glad we're doing breakout rooms so you can share a little bit. Because you're not alone in this. This is actually a very common experience. Dissociation is something that you might have heard of. Maybe your doctor or your therapist or your PT have talked, has talked to you about dissociation. I believe that we all dissociate. I know I dissociate at times. And the question is, can I come back, right? Can I come back to the present moment? And when you look at it, um, it happens on a spectrum. So dissociation can be something that lasts a very brief moment, right? It's where um, I watch a movie and I'm spacing out or um, I go out a little bit further. So I, I feel like I'm zoning out or I'm somewhere else. I'm not quite connected. Um, or it can go even further where you feel like, wow, you know, I don't remember really what just happened. Like when you step out with both feet, right? It's harder than to connect with maybe your family um, or friends or even your pet. I find like, you know, oftentimes I bring one of my dogs to the office. The dogs are great in bringing you back. And then the last step is really where we leave completely. It feels like you're being sucked into a black hole where you can't connect anymore. anymore. And that's where I believe some of the seizures are happening when we're really disconnected. So the sensory sensitivities and the dissociation oftentimes comes with FND symptoms. And they're all signs of a dysregulated nervous system. It's not your fault. You're not dissociating because you don't want to be present. You know, you're dissociating because you don't know how to be with your experience in a different way. I know it's a lot of information, so see what you need right now. Maybe you need to shift your body a little bit. Maybe you can actually look around in the room. Maybe you have a weighted blanket. 
that feels good to you that you can actually use right now or a fidget toy. See what you need right now. And if this feels too much, you can trust your body. So I know I'm packing a lot of information into this. So what can you do? I said there are lots of things you can do and um, I would love to talk for much longer, but I think the first step is to allow your body to feel safe. And I know some of you have your parents listen. So what feels good, right? With F and D, so often the focus is on, you know, what is uncomfortable, what's painful, the fear that comes with it. So what actually feels good? Are there moments where your body is okay? Are there moments where you can check in and you can let go of the narrative that um, we all create when life gets hard. In my experience, one of the big things that the nervous system likes is choice. Having choice. So we can talk more about that when it comes also to how you can communicate with your parents and how parents can ask questions. But having choice is a big, big piece. So you feel trapped in your body most of you at least, having choice is really important. And creating resources, learning about what you can do to regulate your nervous system so that when you feel yourself going up that ladder and you feel like, whoa, I'm getting more anxious or, you know, there are more twitches or, you know, I don't quite know how to be with this, you can learn resources, lots of things that can be helpful to allow you to regulate your nervous system and step down that ladder again. Let me talk just briefly about resources. I know Katie will do a lot more on this. Um, when we talk about resources, oftentimes we think about resources as something that's external, right? Your weighted blanket or an ice pack or a fidget toy. I also think about resources as something that's inside of you. Sometimes that can be a thought that you're kind to yourself or that you can tap into a really good memory that you had, maybe with your family. An inner resource can be knowing that you are lovable just the way you are. You are lovable just the way you are with everything that's going on. So see if you can take that in even just for a moment. That fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with you. You just don't know how to regulate your nervous system. Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with you. And what we, you know, can teach you, there are many, many of us who can teach you is what to do when, like what resource works for you, right? Not every resource works for everybody the same way, but it's really about learning what works for you. So some, some people I've seen, the way the blanket actually doesn't work. Um, so maybe it works for you, that's great. Maybe um, essential oils work for you. Maybe a sensory brush is something that will work for you. And it has to do with where you are. So if you feel more stressed out and activated, you might need things that help you to actually calm down your nervous system. And you already feel numb and in collapse those resources will not help you as much. You might need something else that helps you to wake up a little bit. So that could be music or um, you know, even having your family there uh, if, and, and, or a trusted person who can help you with, with a touch 
for example. So it's really very individualized of what works for everybody. And it's something you can explore. So there are lots of things you can actually do depending on where your symptoms are, right? Where you are on that ladder of activation and what your nervous system is doing. So for sympathetic, you want to introduce safety and calm. And for the more collapsed state, you want to bring a little bit of alertness, but not activation. And I have a couple more slides and I'm aware of time. So I talk a lot about self-regulation. So you're regulating your own nervous system. And um, what I said earlier too, is that, you know, you're not your FND. Every single person I see is an exquisite, beautiful human being, right? You're so much more than your FND. And, and um, bringing kindness and compassion to yourself, knowing that there's nothing wrong with you fundamentally, gets you a long ways to help regulate. Setting boundaries, saying no, asking for help. You can actually learn how to be more in touch with your experience and you can learn to detect earlier when things are starting to feel a little off or weird. So you can learn how to do that with great support and your family or your parents, your caretakers can help you with that too. And that's called co-regulation. So I work a lot with parents and teaching how to co-regulate your child's nervous system. So what you as a parent can do is you learn how to regulate your own nervous system and give space. I know it's hard when your child has symptoms, but you can learn how to actually give some space while staying connected. Listen, validate the experience. Listen, this is the biggest thing I do in my office is to listen to what the teens and the kids and the young adults have to say and be curious about the experience. Let's take the shame out of it. Let's take the shame out of FND. FND is not your fault. It's nobody's fault. Let's take the shame out of FND. And let's create a life according to your nervous system. When you learn about your own nervous system and what you need, you can live a full life. I have worked you know, with teens five, 10 years ago who went through college, who are professionals now. So you can actually live your life. You are more than your symptoms. And I think something that most of us do when we look at FND, we look for FND symptoms. Not everything that's happening in your body is FND. Right? Some days you might just feel a little off. So that's important to remember too that not everything is FND. You're so much more and you have strength. And right now, in this moment, you have some limitations. You don't quite know yet how to regulate your nervous system. But you can learn how to do that. And one thing I want to actually bring up is the word trigger. I know that many of you have either worked with somebody who uses the word trigger or you've heard this before that you should be able to identify your triggers. I don't work with triggers. I think um, if we look for triggers, then we automatically try to avoid them. And I want you to have a full life. I don't want you to be avoiding situations. I want you to learn how to be with challenging times, FND included, and learn how to be with 
yourself and your experience and know that FND is temporary. So I know this was a lot, right? So it's a nervous system problem. It's not a psychiatric issue. Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with you. You can learn and your family can learn how to regulate your nervous system in a way that serves you and that lets you live a really full life. And there are just a few people I want to thank as my last slide. And I will come back with a stop the share. I know this is a lot, it's always a lot. Squeeze in, I'm gonna stop the share. There we go. And I can see Rose. And what I would like to actually um, remind everybody of is that, you know, what Bridget said, uh, what um, Amanda said earlier is like, you can leave the camera on, you can turn it off, you can come back to um, your own curiosity about it. If it feels too much, step away, you can come back to this. So I think Rose, just do a little check in everybody. All right, can you guys see me all right? Yes. There, that's even better. Hi, my name is Rose and I'm here today to share a card game that I developed during my F&D recovery. And uh, like many of you, I was seeing a lot of specialists uh, when I began treatment for my FND, and each of these professionals had different advice and different resources. And that quickly became overwhelming and a source of symptoms in and of itself. Um, I ended a lot of days feeling pretty defeated, like I hadn't done the things I was supposed to do to feel better. Um, thanks to Dr. Munter's online course uh, through FND Courage, I learned that the nervous system likes choice, as you guys just learned today. And I started taking big resources like the FND handbook that Katie's going to talk about later and breaking it up into like individual resource cards that uh, feel less overwhelming and more playful. Um, and today I would like to share some of those cards with you via a three-part game um, about self-regulation. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first step of this game is to notice. Notice Maybe if you've been taking notes, if you wanna write down the things you notice, you can notice something in the room where you are. You can notice maybe your clothing on your body. Maybe there's a sound you can notice. And on a scale of one to 10, notice if there's a number that describes your situation right now. How do you feel right now? And then the second phase of this game. Oh, I forgot. I wrote down a few things that were true for me. So I'm a little sweaty and nervous and also happy. Um, and so the next phase, we choose some resources. And I chose two that are part of the sympathetic hyperactivation um, part of our experience. I like to say sympathetic hyperactivation because it reminds me what it feels like. And a couple for dorsal vagal collapse. Uh, so we're gonna choose a resource here. And this is my dorsal vagal collapse teacher at heart. So the first resource I wanna talk with you today is the candle breath. So if you'd like to, you can pretend your finger is a candle with a flame and try and breathe without blowing out the candle. Mm. 
Another exercise that's good for the sympathetic hyperactivation is a self-holding exercise. So you can take your right hand. You can do this with me if you'd like. Put it in your left arm and give yourself a nice hug. A good resource for dorsal vagal collapse, I learned from a teen in the F and D Courage online course, is uh, something I called the finger worm, or they called the finger worm, and uh, it's just a way to bring a little bit of playfulness and alertness, and just have some dancy fingers. Um, helps with symptoms of paralysis um, and kind of uh, dissociation. And the last one is one Dr. Munter just shared. It's a thought. I am lovable. I'm lovable just the way I am. So if you'll take a minute and choose which resource um, you might want to deepen into right now. This one. Maybe you write it down if you're taking notes. And then in the third step, we notice again. Maybe if you can and it feels right, you can notice what's happening in your body. Maybe you notice a number from one to 10 that describes how you're feeling. Maybe you notice an emotion. Oh. And you can kind of jot down what you noticed. And I hope this doesn't at all minimize the F and D recovery. These are tiny little things, but what I found helpful in my own recovery was the skill of noticing and the skill of choosing. And so hopefully that can be um, helpful to you as well. Thank you.